Got my grizzly grass. So first thing I'm gonna do is lay this thing out. Uh, so I guess I'll roll up the screen here. Make some working room. Pull the curtains back. And there's one thing I did since uh, we talked last I wanna point out here. Before we get to laying out the turf here, I wanna show you one thing I did with the end of these mats and it's really around um, recessing that weight bar that's in the bottom of the impact screen. So I just cut a two by four and I'm just putting it underneath the mats here to give a ramp effect on the end of the mat so the, that bar can live back here and uh, not be on the ground so it keeps the screen tight um, but just kind of hang in this area while hitting and uh, I've had no ball to bar interaction since I did that so I'm going to keep that in place but I'm just <clears throat> pulling that two by four out for now uh, to lay the turf down then I'll slide it back under there. Now I did get some of this uh, double-sided indoor outdoor carpet tape it says professional must be good I have no idea whether this stuff is good or not um, but they had it at Lowe's where I got the turf so that's why I ended up with um, but before I do any taping I'm gonna lay this thing out uh, see how it lays and how much cutting I need to do and tweaking and all that good stuff so let's get that so this is a, a while in the making between COVID quarantine and uh, some other things, but when I was looking online in anticipation of getting out of COVID quarantine, I noticed that Lowe's put this stuff on clearance. So this is a six foot wide piece. They also had a 12 foot wide piece in stock. But this stuff, they had clearance down to 19 cents per square foot. So by far the cheapest I've ever seen anything close to that. And uh, this seems to be better quality than some of the others that I found at uh, some of the other big box stores. Um, so ha by happy coincidence, I saved quite a bit of money. So I got two eight-foot pieces of this six-foot wide turf for like $24. I was expecting to spend quite a bit more on that, uh, but again, a happy coincidence. When does that ever happen? It goes way down. Regular price is like 73 cents a square foot, so pretty big reduction in price there. So this turf is gonna do a couple things for us. Uh, number one, it's gonna look better than these black mats. Number two, it's going to soften the, the ball a little bit, not a lot, um, but it's also gonna give us a nice smooth surface to putt on if we wanna do that. And then the third, it's gonna be cleaner. So what I've noticed with the black rubber mats, if you hit an errant shot into it or you hit a shot with a lot of spin and it comes off the screen with a lot of spin, it will pick up some of this black rubber on your ball. And then if you don't clean it off or switch balls and hit it into the impact screen, you're gonna have a black mark on your screen. So this should prevent that also. So you can see at the store, I had them, instead of just getting 16, Feet, I had them get just do two pieces of eight feet and as per standard they gave us uh, probably four inches extra on here so we've got plenty and looking at something like that so 
I will be lining up this seam and cutting off this edge. I might turn this around because this edge looks better. All right, so what I'll do is probably tape down this side, get that all situated. Um, on the edge here, I've got a little buffer to play with too uh, if I want to trim that up perfect. Anyway, get this tape down and situate that one. But yeah, it looks pretty good so far. I like it. The only thing I'm thinking is obviously you see I have a seam here. See, I'm going to have a seam. And because I've got right-handed, mostly right-handed players, that's going to be in line with the player. Now, uh, I can either move this seam over to this area and it won't be in the hitting area, and that's what I'm leaning towards, but actually it would be a good alignment tool uh, for the hitting area, you can kind of, and putting, it's going to show you that, but it doesn't really exist in the real world. So, I think I'm going to move that seam over here, <clears throat> just so it's out of the, the line of sight there as much as possible. So what that means is I have to move... this piece over here so that I'm going to trim on that edge. Probably should read the directions, huh? Thoroughly clean and, clean and dry floor surface. Apply tape, liner side up, pressing firmly to floor. Roll and fold one half of carpet area back over itself, remove tape, roller forward cover, blah, 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 repeat, repeat, sounds pretty easy. What I'm going to attempt to do is run my tape <clears throat> right down the seam here. And I was thinking to have both pieces on the same one, but that doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna put two I'll just put two, a double width on this seam. Now, one concern I had is whether or not this tape, how it would stick to the rubber mats here. And so far, it seems to be a non-issue, especially with this non-textured one i couldn't find the same exact mat here for every one of them so i've got one that's different has a non-texture on the surface no surprise the tape seems to be sticking the best to that one and there's ones with a little bit of texture seems to be not quite sticking as well but we'll see what that looks like long term So I've got this edge down. Honestly, it's not really that great. It's not sticking to this carpet very well. It's sticking to the, the rubber fine, but this back of this carpet isn't really sticking that great, but oh well, it doesn't have to be Amazing here. All right, going pretty well here. I don't expect that to withstand a hurricane by any means, but but it seems to be keeping things reasonably in place there.
so I got the seam done, this side taped down, I just had to finish putting some tape on that side to secure it a little bit, then go around and clean up all the edges, trim it up. All right, that went pretty well. Have it all laid out, taped down, trimmed up. Again, that tape is not holding the best, but um, we'll see how it goes long term. I can always just put some different kind of tape under there. So the only thing left to do is slip my 2 by 4 under the end to get that ramp effect uh, to recess the weight bar in the bottom of the impact screen. Then we're ready to uh, try this thing out and see how the balls land on it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm liking it. Some wrinkles in there. I'm not a master uh, carpet layer, but I think this looks pretty good. Finishes off that look pretty good. Let's see how a ball lands on there. I'm not expecting a drastic difference. This isn't a very plush uh, carpet, and, and the main reason for that is the taller ones get pretty expensive. That um, but the other thing is putting. This is more of like a realistic green um, versus the taller artificial grasses are obviously more like a fairway or even a first cut of rough. Those would have been, done a better job at capturing the ball, but obviously then you get uh, not a very realistic putting experience. So let's see how this goes. Pretty good, definitely still rolls back. Um, but versus versus what it was doing on the rubber, that's slowed down quite a bit. Ideally, you hit it straight ahead with not much side spin and it comes right back to you. That was pretty nice. So I've been hitting into my screen about a month here um, and using it very heavy, probably hitting into it at least once a day for half hour, 45 minutes. And I've been doing speed drills with the driver and I'm up um, into the 160 mile per hour ball speed range. Um, so I've really been testing this thing out and the first thing to break not a huge surprise to me was my bar, my, the three quarter inch steel bar I've got in the bottom here to provide weight for my roll up screen uh, ripped through the end here. Let's get a uh, look at that. So what I did here is I wrapped this fabric around, sewed it across the top um, to create this sleeve for the bar. And then the screen was bunching up on the ends. So what I did is I sort of tensioned this uh, fabric and then sewed the ends there to, to stretch the, the fabric in the cross, cross direction. And uh, it ripped through here. And, you know, reflecting on this, I could have done a better job of chamfering this edge and getting rid of the, the sharp edge on the bar. Um, so what I'm going to do is pull this thing out. I probably now have to cut an inch or so off this bar to get enough fabric back here to sew again. Um, but I think I'm going to wrap some, I'm going to remove the bar. I'm going to wrap some fabric on this edge. Um, probably take my grinder and chamfer this edge better, wrap some fabric, tape it, put it back in. Uh, and again, I have to trim it, but put it back in and then sew that back up. And I think, that should take care of the problem. Here's a close-up view of the other end, what it looked like um, before it ripped through on that end. You can see it's sewn here. Again, I'm no uh, seamstress, that's not perfect, but that held together. It's starting to uh, tear some of the fibers in the material here on that edge. 
So I think um, chamfering that edge better, adding some fabric and some tape so it's not such a pressure point down there, I think should be a long, good long-term solution. Here's what I ended up doing. I cut about an inch and a half off, beveled both edges really good with a flap disc on the grinder, wrapped a piece of thin fabric over this and taped it and then tucked it in the edge there to try to remove uh, that sharp spot from the end. I didn't want to go too overboard with the fabric and padding here because I still need to fit it in the sleeve that's sewn in the bottom of the shield, but uh, let's get this baby back in. So all I have to do back on this end, I had to shorten this so I'd get have some more fabric. I can put another, sew this closed. So I'll do that. And I was hoping I have enough then to come back on this side and move the bar in a little bit so this wear point is shifted in from where it used to be. So we'll see if we've got enough to do that. All right, I think we've got just enough fabric here. I've cut that down enough. Shove the bar over that way so I can put a stitch in here to move this wear point over just a little bit from where it was. A sewer's life, I tell you what, came out of the needle. Back in business, sir. We'll see how it holds up like this. Here I'm going to demonstrate the keystone adjustment on our projector here. So you can see it's not quite fitting on the screen, but I tried to maximize uh, the height of it and the width. You can see uh, just because of the aspect ratio of the screen, we're not get, able to get all the way to the top. But uh, this actually has quite a bit of adjustment in it here if we go to settings and we can go to our keystone adjustment here and what we want to use is the four corner keystone and we're able to pinch in each corner and so this is able to create a little bit different aspect ratio there but you can see I'm nearly maxed out on that upper right corner. <clears throat> so that's the best way I found to be able to really maximize the screen heart height and the width. You can see there we're getting most of the screen. Um, and again, the reason I se selected to go with that high of a screen is to, uh, so I can hit the uh, wedge shots and stuff and still be on the impact screen and not have to have netting or something above that, even though it's not filled. But um, I, I think it does a pretty good job. It's almost entirely filled. That is your keystone adjustment.